guys, so today we're going to talk about the basic layout of Final Cut Pro X. I know it can be pretty scary if you've never dealt with a software like this before, but once you know each of the basic parts, I'm sure you'll feel a lot more prepared to start your edits. So let's look at first the toolbar that all softwares have. This is exactly like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or anything you've ever used before. You can just click on this toolbar and it gives you a drop down menu of things that you can do. Okay? The particular windows to Final Cut Pro, you have your event library, your media library, this is your viewer, your effects and clip properties, audio panel, your transitions and effects and titles viewer, the timeline, which is actually the video that you're editing, and this controls the media that you've got on your timeline as well as your projects. Let's take these one by one. Your event library. Events are like projects. It's a weird word, but all it means is an event is a big folder where you keep a lot of things. So for example, for my admissions day video project, I have all of these different clips that I can use. And that doesn't mean it's only video, it can be audio, it can be images, anything that you want. So everything that you need for your project after you've imported it, you can find it here. Now, the clip player or the media player as this is, actually has all of your clips and audio that you want to use. If you scroll over, with your mouse, you can see that it plays the video not only in this little square but also in your viewer so you can make sure which is the clip that you want to play. Now your viewer, this plays out not only the clips but also the videos that you've got on your timeline. So this is, this is very useful, this is actually how you make sense of your edit. Properties panel on this side will display the properties of the clip that you've got selected. So if I select this clip, for example, with this little kitty and the popcorn maker, it shows me its properties. If I want to change its name, I can change it here. I can edit the audio or add effects to the audio here. Um, and these are different things that we can do later on. Now, coming down here, this audio toolbar is very useful because can you see this little green thing this is going to help you measure the volume of your clips and your overall project you want your audio to be balanced and easy to listen to and not either be too quiet or too loud if you want to look at effects titles transitions this is the toolbar that you want to look at right each of these buttons if you hover your mouse a little bit over them it's going to tell you what they do so for example this one shows or hides the events browser so that disappears and then it comes back up again. Each particular one of these has a different job, so titles, transitions, video generators, anything like that. So these two buttons are very useful. Another way to bring up this particular panel is to toggle or to click on this little one. See how it disappears? And then it comes back on. And this one with the arrow, you may recognize it from things on the internet that um, you want to share. If you click it, it also gives you options of how to export your file. And you can export directly to YouTube, Vimeo or Facebook if you've got it con configured like I have, or just to a master file that then you can upload. Now, these two buttons have similar but very different properties. This first one, if you click it, it helps you adjust the, the speed at which a clip is played. You can make it slower, you can make it faster, you can make it go backwards. This is also really useful, especially if you're doing artsy stuff. This button with the magic wand, it's gonna do color balance, audio enhancement, and this is related to this, the property panel up here. Now onto the timeline, which is the most basic bit of a video editor. This has all of my clips, and if I run my mouse through it as well, you can see how it's playing out in the viewer. You have your general timeline here. This is telling you I am in second 58 point oh, with eight frames, yeah? Next to it is this little percentage sign. If you click on it, it tells me what it's doing, what background tasks Final Cut Pro is running behind the scenes. Now, two tools that are very, very useful for your timeline. First of all, you have these little buttons up here. These two, can you see that they've got a little red line running through them? If you, whenever something's in blue, it means it's highlighted, it means it's selected. This one does the effect of when I hover my mouse over the video, it plays it out quickly. If I also wanted to play out the sound, then I need to click on that. Can you hear that? It's very faint because I just recorded off the screen. But you would actually hear the sound, right? This can mute the sound. And this is very important. See how this has between two clips, like a little star power thing? This is gonna make sure that whenever you put a clip next to each other, there isn't a blank space in between it. So they're attached exactly at where they should be. 
Yeah, this is very useful as well to align things and make sure everything's perfectly aligned. Now down here are your other two buttons. This one is a zoom in, in and out button. You can just toggle it and see how your view changes. It doesn't change the clips, it just changes how you can see them. And if you click on this little button to the side, it gives you options of how you can view your clips in a different way. So if you want to see more of the audio waveform or more of the video, this is very useful, but it's, it doesn't adapt the clip. It's just a question of what makes it easier for you to work with. And you can always go back to the way things were before. Click it to disappear. And now on to this side. This menu bar has two ways of displaying things. If this little kind of drop down menu list is highlighted, then it's going to show you all of the elements that you've got on your timeline. Right, so it's telling me I've got a cross dissolve transition, a video, then a title, then a cross dissolve transition. So if I click on it, it takes me to that. So it's easier if you're looking through thousands and thousands of subtitles, for example, you can just guide yourself that way. Now, if you click this other kind of film roll here, it takes you to your project library. Projects are timelines. Event and project are the weirdest words that they could have chosen. But anyway, think of it this way. Your projects are your actual timelines. And you can organize them in folders. If you use the little folder plus sign here, it'll give you a new folder. And this plus sign on its own will give you a new timeline. But you have to relate them to a certain event. So they have media to pull from. So for example, if I click the plus sign and I'm going to make a new one called Cats are Cool. It's gonna ask me which event I want to link it to. And yes, I want it to be linked to cat videos. And that means it's gonna give me access to all of the files that I've imported into that particular event. Let's cancel it for now. That is in basic terms what you can see here. If at any point you lose one of these windows, don't panic, come up to window. And in this section here, it gives you all of the options of what you can show or hide. So if you can't find them, you don't remember how to pull them up from all of the different buttons, don't despair, this is where you can get them. So for example, if I want to hide my audio meters, they've disappeared. If I want to bring them back, there we go, easy peasy. So whatever you do, don't panic. The main idea is that you have this layout that's supposed to help you through your edit and make things smooth so you can see everything at the same time, but still be exactly in control of what you want to do. See you next video.